Matthew 6, verses 5 through 8. Yeah, Peter. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. Yes, so it's extremely important to note in verses 5 through 8 that that's Jesus talking and Jesus specifically telling us how to pray, where to pray, how God hears you, all of that. And he puts an emphasis on the private part of prayer, so it's not flashy, it's not something to be posted on social media like, hey, just prayer and selfie type of thing. Um, but really, he just craves that alone time with you. He craves that intimacy because he wants your heart and he wants a genuine heart. And along with that, if you look at scripture, Jesus oftentimes withdrew himself to go and pray and spend time with God. He was in the midst doing his ministry, but when he needed to go and pray about something, he would withdraw himself to the wilderness, and that's where he met God, and that's where he talked to God. Um, and just the more you're able to quiet yourself, the more you open up your ears and your heart to be able to hear God, and then that becomes one with you. And then can we also have someone actually read the Lord's Prayer, which is verses 9 through 15. I know a lot of you probably have that memorized. Again, if you don't, that's totally cool. Um, but if someone wants to read the Lord's Prayer for us, that'd be great. You got it? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Yeah, so when analyzing this verse, we're trying to look at, okay, so prayer is obviously something that is this conversation with God. It's this two-way street of developing this relationship. But prayer actually does something to us. And so we found eight different things that prayer does to me when I pray and when we pray this way specifically. Um, and so that first thing is just it cr increases my humility. And the first verse is our Father who art in heaven. And that is really significant because, again, when we talk about like other religions compared to Christianity, God is this all... Um, it's this figure or it's this being that's untouchable, unreachable, but how Jesus tells us to pray is to pray to God like he is our father, to address him as Abba, which in the Arabic means daddy or father, and to have not, e not only this relationship of God and man, but this relationship of your father who is in heaven, and um, understanding how that humbles us a lot knowing that um, we get to have access to the creator of all things and the almighty God. Mm -hmm. So it increases humility, and then two, it leads you into a place of worship. So hallowed be thy name. Hallowed also means like sacred, or it means holy. And so when we pray this, we remind ourselves that we are separate from God. We are not perfect like he is. We are not faultless and pure like he is, um, and that we need him. And so we become aware of our own frailty, and we adore him, and we take into that time of so hallowed be thy name is like this sacred holy thing mm -hmm. and the third part so the first one was brings me into a place of humility and the second part is leads me into a place of worship and the third one is it brings me to a place of surrender so when we're looking at that line thy kingdom come thy will be done it's understanding that we actually don't have control of what happens tomorrow we don't have control of creation around us but we serve the one who does and so humbling ourselves and surrendering and offering to God that we understand that it's not necessarily he doesn't need us necessarily but we need him more than he needs us and understand how much love he has for us that we get to approach him in prayer and um, just surrendering ourselves and giving him our desires and our hearts so that we can make his desires become our desires and um just looking at that too, it, it keeps us in step with the Spirit so that He will get where get us where He wants us to get. 
And then it also teaches us to be content and increase our faith. So the next line is, give us this day our daily bread. Um, in that verse, it's not like God, so manna is the word for bread in the Bible. And it's not like saying, God, just please rain down bread on us every single day so that we have a ton of carbs to eat. Like he's talking about um, how he's the provider and it's this symbolism of provision in our life and that um, we need God in all areas of life, spiritually, mentally, physically. And um, we just need to seek him on a regular basis because we can quickly become independent and self-sufficient. And that's when it becomes extremely dangerous when we're not relying on God for our daily strength. Uh, and just in the Bible specifically, Jesus says, like, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Like, just worry about today, the day that I've blessed you with, because we're not promised tomorrow either. And then the fifth point is it sets us free from hate and helps us to um, forgive those that we haven't forgiven. And when we're asking, and so the line that we're talking about here is, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And looking at that and understanding that God does forgive us and looking at the message that we gave last week on forgiveness, where God does forgive us and he loves us and for, has forgiven us for all the mistakes that we have made. And so it becomes a very um, humbling issue where we know that God is forgiving us for the things that we've done and we've wronged him, but knowing that we also have had people that we feel have wronged us. And so if we're getting forgiven day after day by God, we have no excuse not to forgive those that have done wrong against us. And so it's that bringing us into a place of forgiveness. Yeah, and that's like kind of exactly what we talked about last week with the forgiveness message. Like, because God has forgiven us, we are called to forgive other people. And if you weren't here for that message, it was really great. I wish we would have been able to record it. Because it's just a reminder, even to us, like of the daily, the daily surrender and just the fact that we have to forgive. Um, but then the last one is, um, it guards our heart from temptation. So the very last line in the Lord's Prayer is, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Um, it is not wrong to be tempted or tested. Jesus was many times in the Bible. But it's wrong to give in to that temptation. And uh, just pray for protection from your Heavenly Father. In Matthew 4, 4, uh, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, he declared, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So in times of trial, even Jesus recognized that God was his source of deliverance. And likewise, when evil is knocking at our door, like God needs to be the first one that we're calling to. Mm -hmm. So kind of now that we've analyzed and looked at what verse or what the Lord's Prayer says that we need to, that we get out of prayer necessarily. Now we kind of want to make this more applicable for you guys and so that you guys can go here and that you can have that deeper relationship with God and as you enter in times of prayer that you can get the most out of it and develop that just genuine heart for God. And so when looking at how we should pray, we narrowed it down to about eight different things and it sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot, but it's very prayer simple. Prayer is complicated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the first one is adoration. So that first verse of our Father and uh, thy kingdom come, just looking at him and praising God for his greatness, that you get to serve uh, the creator of all things, and it puts you in a very humble place, knowing that you're not in control of what happens tomorrow, but, but God is, and you do serve the one that um, has the keys to the whole, the whole kingdom. Um, the second one is submission. So surrendering and giving God your life, giving God... Okay, if there's any area of my life that I'm struggling with, is there any area of my life that I'm not honoring you in it, but just surrendering every piece of that life to him um, is a very productive way to pray. And then the next one would be thankfulness. So thanking him for all the things that he's done for you in your life. And I know this one's a big one for me because anytime you're struggling with, um, like if you're struggling with depression, or if you're struggling with, worry or frustration anxiety. anxiety those things that we all kind of go through it really brings us back when we can start from a place of like an attitude of gratitude where if we can look at god and thank him for all the many things that he's done in our life and realize that he has blessed us with so much and yeah there might be one or two things that we're struggling with or going through but to reframe our perspective and understanding that he has given us so much is a very powerful thing um and just that mental health i guess mm -hmm. is a trendy word but that is very helpful and then the next one is just trust um knowing that 
God is going to provide for you and just putting your trust 100% in him uh, is a very good way to take care of those worries, to take care of those frustrations and putting that trust, knowing that he is going to provide that next day. Um, and then understanding that life has a ton of that uncertainty in it and that's unavoidable. But with Christ, we can be joyful in that because we know that we're serving the one that does have the answers, that does know what the long-term plan is. And um, if a problem seems really big in your life, that's probably because your image of God has gotten really small. So the bigger you can trust God and the bigger image you have of God, then those worries or those frustrations, they, they, they start to shrink on you. And then the last four. So Jordan went through the first four, which were adoration, submission, thankfulness, trust. They're all up here. And then forgiveness, like we've been talking about, um, forgiving ourselves, forgiving others because God forgave us. And then number six is protection, um, guarding your heart and mind from temptation. Prayer should be something that's proactive, not reactive. You shouldn't only be praying when something goes wrong. It should be that daily conversation, that daily dialogue, that two-way highway, um, in constant conversation with God all day long, not just like, God, this horrible thing happened, now I'm going to pray for you, pray to you or for you. And then seven is with, with faith. Jordan kind of talked about if your problems seem really, really big, you've probably put God in this box, you've made him really small. So just praying that God-sized prayer. Oftentimes we don't ask him for enough. Uh, we just put him, like I said, in this box and he operates in this four by four square when he's a God of miracles. Like, um, he's made the lame walk. He made the blind see. So why can't he answer that crazy prayer like you want to ask him for? Um, in Mark 11, 22 to 24, um, this is Jesus talking. He says, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it does not doubt and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And then the last one, super important, um, can be pretty difficult at times, but just praying for others, um, praying for your friends, praying for your family, praying for your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever it is, praying for your enemies, so-called enemies, those people that have wronged you, who you haven't forgiven yet. Um, prayer is so powerful and it picks away and transforms our hearts like a prayer at a time. And yeah. And I know there's, so we have eight points up here and I know that's a lot and you normally might not have that much time unless you are devoting a couple minutes of God to just praying and being alone with him, which is great. And I recommend you do that. But at the same time, you could just pick one or two of these at a time where you're walking to class and just like thanking God for the sunshine today, thanking God for that you get to go to practice or you, that you get to hang out with your friends this evening. And just having, picking one or two of those at any time throughout the day is a great thing to just humbling that mind and bringing you to a place that you can um, just be connected with God and be one with his thoughts and allowing his thoughts to become your thoughts. And then the other thing, one idea that we got from a friend that has been very helpful for us in how we pray and just being more intentional about the things that we're praying for is coming up with a prayer calendar. So a prayer calendar is just, you map out the days of the week, and then you pick two or three topics for each day. And then on that day, whenever you're praying, that you could touch on those things. So a couple examples of those would be like family, friends. You could pray for yourself, job, school, world issues, church, church leaders, um, salvation of non-believers, uh, your sport, your future, your health, your finances go on and on and on. You could pick however, whatever you want, but that has been something that's been very helpful for us um, in taking these eight different points, but then also uh, just making sure that you are praying for those things that you want to pray for, that friend that you said you would pray for, and just journaling them down so that you um, can be intentional with that, that time with God. So yeah. what we're going to go into, do you have anything to Well, add? yeah, I just know oftentimes too, like if I've in the past I've been guilty of like, oh, someone's like, oh, can you pray for me? Or, or they'll say like, oh, I'll pray for you. But like, how often do you actually remember to do that if you're just like in conversation? So this is an opportunity to like write down that friend you said you're gonna pray for. Or also too, like I'm so guilty of at night, like having this list of things I wanna pray for, but then I just fall asleep. It's like you pray for one or two things and then you're just like out. You're like, oh, at least I fell asleep praying, but like I didn't get through all the things I wanted to get through. 
So this way it's been super helpful. Like you have three points, like you make set a time before bed in the morning, wherever it is, and you just like pray for them. So next we're just gonna go into we're gonna take five, six minutes here where you guys can build out that sheet right now with those things that come to mind. And then once you finish with that, you can just spend the rest of the time in prayer, just you and God having a conversation and uh, so we'll just play some music and you